let's go back in the garage with Gas Pump Rob. Hey guys, we are back in the garage. In the last video, you witnessed this pair of 541 pumps running, but not pumping. In this video, I'm going to try to troubleshoot and actually get the pumps to run. We'll see how this goes. The Rio Grande pump doesn't have any suction at all. I basically ran it. You could put your hand up under the suction pipe and there's absolutely nothing. It's just basically freewheeling right now. This pump over here from Kansas actually has great suction, but the calculator is completely frozen up, so that'll need some work. Both of these pumps will need work. The first thing I'm going to do is remove this control valve cover and find out if the control valve is possibly frozen shut. Also, there's this, the bypass valve cover, and that I might have to remove as well. We'll see. Let's go ahead and try to Use some penetrating spray on all the fasteners here. The pump is from California, so it doesn't have a whole lot of rust, and that's definitely to my advantage. Everything actually comes apart really nicely on this pump. Oh boy, I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> it smells like old varnished gasoline. You gotta love this, guys. <laughs> Wow, there's all kinds of like crusty old varnished gas in this valve. Look at that. I'm gonna have to do some cleaning for sure. Yeah, I want you guys to see this because seeing it is the only way to understand it. This control valve is now free and loose. And watch, I'm going to pull it out so you can see what it looks like. It slides in and out of a bore, and there is a rubber seating surface, vulcanized rubber, that I'm going to clean up. You can see it around the diameter of the uh, brass valve. Okay? I'm also going to clean the bore real well. This part here is spring-loaded against the cover. Okay, this is the bypass valve, which is on the right-hand side of the uh, Bennett 40 pump. And I realized there's a threaded hole in the center of the bypass valve. I threaded a 3 8 bolt into it and sprayed a lot of penetrating oil on it since last night. And actually, it pulled right out. Check this out almost effortlessly. And the good news is the seat and the valve are in very good condition. This will clean right up and work. Okay, the bypass valve cover is put back on as well as the control valve cover. And you can see a little bit of that uh, forma gasket squeezed out which is, in my opinion, a good thing. I put more towards the outside than the inside because you don't want any of that to get into the pump unit. Okay, I just ran a test 
and I still do not have suction. Apparently the, the pump veins might be frozen, so the next step will be to remove these bolts right here on this cover and pull this pump assembly out from its housing and check the veins and seals. Okay, the next step here is to remove the pumping unit from the main housing. I unbolted the flange all the way around and removed it. And now this part here will pull straight out of the housing. You want to pull straight out because it has nylon veins that you can damage possibly by cocking it sideways. Okay, I already see the problem. This is the rotor and it has machined grooves and these are nylon veins or seals and they are stuck solid in their grooves. They do not protrude at all from the rotor. And the way this thing works is with this spinning, centrifugal force will cause these nylon veins to pop out against this internal housing here. And there's ports in here. There's a port on this side as well as this side. And that's what moves the fluid. So what I need to do is get this on the bench and free up these nylon veins, that way they can slide in and out with centrifugal force. Put it back together and give it another run. What I had to do is take this small screwdriver and get in behind the vein and work it out until I had enough of a groove to spray more carb cleaner down in the grooves to get these out. They were pretty well seized in, I'm gonna be honest with you. But this one I cleaned. It appears to be a brass vein, and on the side that uh, rubs against the pump housing internally, there's a nylon insert, and that's the seal right there. That's, that, that's what contacts the sealing surface in that pump. So they only go in one way, and that's like this. And with centrifugal force, they move outward and seal against the pump housing. So I'm gonna thoroughly clean these lubricate everything and put it back in. I just finished cleaning up the pump housing and it's amazing. The pump housing surface still has a factory crosshatch to it. There is no scoring whatsoever. You can see the intake and exhaust ports. I wanted you guys to see that. Just so you can understand how this works a little bit better. There was a, a huge buildup of uh, gum and varnish right here. It was like tar. And with the carb cleaner, it just came right off. These Bennett pumps were built to last. I'm using uh, Mobile One synthetic oil, actually, for assembly lube. This is the last vein that I'm installing. And if I were to pick this up right now to slide it into that pump housing, you know what would happen. These veins would just fly out. The bottom ones would fly out. So I went in the house and picked up a couple of rubber bands. And hopefully this will help the situation. I'm figuring put it in about the center there like that. And then when I go to pick it up, I can slide it into the housing without issues of a vein getting caught or dropping on the floor.
Okay, this is the moment of truth. Like I said earlier, we ran this Rio Grande pump. There was absolutely no suction at all. I just finished reassembling the pump. I put the belt on. I'm going to fire it off and we're going to check for suction right now. Here we go. Beautiful suction. This pump will operate and pump gasoline soon or diesel as long as this, the meter, isn't frozen up. If this meter's frozen up internally, that'll be the next step. We're going to have to take that apart and rebuild it. Okay, the meter's out. I've got it on my bench. And we're going to take a look inside. It has four pistons, as you can see, connected to a shaft. And I tried to, uh, I tried to move this and it's frozen up. So I'm going to spray the assembly internally and then free it up. That's the Bennett meter. And we're good to go. Let's put this pump back together and give it a run. Okay guys, I tried to free up this calculator without pulling it from the pump. I couldn't pull it off. I thought I could take a shortcut approach, but I could not do it. I pulled a rat's nest out. I've pulled a lot of other dirt and debris out and I've gotten it to this point here. Okay, it resets now, and down from underneath, I turn the variator, and it rotates effortlessly now. The reason you don't hear the bell is because I had to pull the bell off in order to get the uh, housing off, the sheet metal housing. So that's where we're at. I'm going to do a little more cleaning and lubing, reassemble the calculator and put it back in the pump. Okay, I just finished reinstalling the calculator and the meter. The pump has suction, so that should be good to go. And I decided to remove the sight glass assembly just four bolts on the flange. By the way, Bennett used a neoprene or rubber gasket right here, which is really nice because there's still plenty of uh, flexibility to it. I can reuse that, maybe add a little bit of sealer. I cleaned the glass with CRC throttle body and air intake cleaner. We use this at our shop all the time to clean automotive throttle body assemblies because it can remove rust, varnish, and carbon. It cleaned up the glass quite well. 
I'm going to reassemble this and then hopefully we'll be able to watch this pump pump diesel fuel tonight. For all of you out there watching this video, I have to let you guys know this was not an easy project. This gas pump was actually pumping gasoline in its day and there were gum varnish deposits, carbon deposits built up in the pump, in the meter. The calculator had a rat's nest in it so it wouldn't turn. This was not an easy task to uh, accomplish and I am hoping this time this particular run it'll actually pump diesel fuel. There's the signal 15 gallon drum that you witnessed diesel fuel being dispensed into earlier in a previous video, the G&B model 80. And there's the G&B clock face that you saw run. And then we have the other 541 from Kansas my last Iowa gas adventure trip. It will pump, but it will also require work. I don't know if I'm going to bother with that right now. There are other things I'd like to move on towards. So there we go. There you have it. Let's hopefully see some pumping action now. Stay tuned. Yes! Woo! It works! This is not an ordinary day or an ordinary experience. Experience the Bennett 
541 No Guts No Glory video by Gas Pump Raw. This 1939 Bennett 541 gas pump is running in real time pumping diesel fuel. If anyone had decided to gut this pump, this video would not be possible without a complete reconstruction. Enter the Twilight Zone.